Hello, my name is Jessica Dion, and I am fortunate enough to serve as a fifth grade science and social studies teacher for Rose Pond Elementary School, located in Vernon Parish, Louisiana. I am passionate about all things education. I hope to use this platform to improve collaborative practices for educators, particularly those in rural school districts. In our large state, many teachers find themselves without a true campus peer to collaborate with. For example, I am the only teacher at my school assigned to teach fifth grade science and social studies. The technology exists to foster a meaningful, informal, collaborative culture for all teachers, whether across the hallway or across the state. Today, I invite you to join our lesson titled WebWorks. This lesson is aligned to the Louisiana Student Standards for Science. It addresses several disciplinary core ideas which are noted in my attached lesson plans. The guiding purpose of the Ecosystems Unit is for students to recognize that matter cycles among plants, animals, decomposers, and microbes. During the lesson, students conduct a standards-based team activity utilizing science and engineering practices to develop a model to describe phenomena. Prior to the filming process, I spent four days front-loading information relating to ecosystems. Students were exposed to relevant vocabulary and viewed several short videos on the topic. At the beginning of today's lesson, I asked for student input to construct a food web in a whole group setting. This was done to model the process with students before releasing responsibility to peer groups. As you will see in the video, the students were prepared to complete the task and did not back down when presented with a formidable challenge. With a backpack full of content knowledge, my students were confident and eager to voice their thoughts and correct their misconceptions until success was obtained. I believe the front-loading strategy facilitates access to learning for all students, regardless of exceptionality or background. The footage includes video taken from each of my four classes. All told, I teach all RES fifth grade students, over 120 students daily. Nearly all of them are featured in this film. My school is a Title I school, with the majority of students qualifying for free or reduced meals. While some of my students have been born and raised in the piney woods of Vernon Parish, others have experienced life from all corners of the world. Our campus is uniquely situated in a rural community just miles from a major military installation. Approximately 20% of my students come from an active duty household. Having such a transient population can present many challenges. With students traveling from out of state and even out of country schools, background knowledge cannot be taken for granted. Each year, I find myself sculpting a new curriculum to meet the needs of my current classroom. To me, this is a challenge that keeps my job fresh and motivating. In just a moment, you are going to get to view an average day in my classroom. It is important to me that you witness a lesson that is typical, not contrived, no deviations from our daily grit and grind. I hope you are anticipating it at this very moment. I know that you will appreciate the organic, ambitious, and determined culture of Room 35 at Rose Pine Elementary School. Sit back and enjoy the wow. Hi, hi. And every time we start a lesson, I'm always telling you that I have a checklist of things to teach you. Raise your hand if you've heard me say that before. A lot. Yeah. Okay, so today's no different. I have two things on our checklist that I want to be able to cross off. By the end of today, I want you to be able to do these two things. First, I need you to be able to tell me how energy flows through a food web. So today as we're doing our lesson, keep in mind that at the end, you're going to have to answer that question for me in order to prove that you mastered today's lesson. The other key concept is how will a change to an ecosystem affect a food web? I'm going to have you explain that and justify it to me. With oh, yes. Okay, welcome back from lunch. Look, before we left, I made a sample food web with your help. I told you we before we left that sometimes when your ELA teacher is modeling how to write a paragraph, it seems so simple. But when you've got to do it on your own, it's actually a little bit more difficult and intimidating and even frustrating. So when you're working on this right now, it might seem more frustrating than the one that we did up here together. But remember, you have all that background knowledge. We have loaded your brain down. And you, along with your group members, can talk it out and figure it out. There's nothing wrong with getting it wrong because even in science or in life in general, but especially science, we can learn from our mistakes. We can learn from successes and mistakes. So it's okay if you make some mistakes today. 
Just don't get frustrated and don't okay. shut down. Remember, I'm going to grade you on participation today, and these are the rules that we've all agreed on. Mm -hmm. No hogs, no laws, mm -hmm. no arguing, happy mm -hmm. attitudes only, mm -hmm. and using our time wisely, which is a big one for us because it's the end of the school day, and we don't have any extra time. We've got to really make sure that we <laughs> wrap up in time to pack up. All right, so I'm about to give each group your set of supplies. Every group's going to get a bag. It's really simple. Inside of the bag are six organism cards. Different than the organisms we used on the board, because if we used the same ones, it would that would be, be, that would be a challenge. said that five animals eat the berry bush. How many animals do you have? Five. How many are here? Five. So how many arrows should be leaving that berry bush? Five. Because all of them eat that berry bush. So let's see if we can correct that real quick. Uh-huh. Okay, we're getting better. Would you like another clue? Oh, class. Oh, yeah. Would you like clue number two? Here's clue number two. Listen carefully. Wolves do not eat birds. Only one animal eats deer. The mouse is food for two animals. I'm going to put the clue card on the board in case you need to refer to it again. Wolves do not eat birds. Only one animal eats the deer.
forest environment and originally I had a different plan. I was going to talk to you about what would happen if a fire struck this food web that we just created. But then something big happened in our community this week on Monday. Raise your hand if you can tell me what big thing happened that's very unique for our area. All right, Queen? We had a tornado. In class, was it a little tornado or a big one? Big one. It went for 63 miles. It was very powerful and sadly it's affected our ecosystem. So besides the fact that we have people in our community right now that are struggling, let's take a look at this as a scientist. Look at these animals and look at these uh, the plants. Now imagine if a tornado just ripped through your food web. Can anyone raise their hand and tell me one change that would happen as a result Thinking of that? Maybe their shelter? Yes. Their home? Okay, and they might have to migrate. I heard that word, good word. Okay. So, do you think this is going to be a 24-hour process? No. No. Now, do you think that the deer in our area are going to go extinct? No. No, it wasn't that significant of a change. But yet it is something that has thrown our environment off kilter. It's made us a little unbalanced. But the beautiful thing about science and Mother Nature is that she always figures out how to fix herself. Now, it might not be quick. And it might not be fast. And you might be driving past this damage on the bus for the next nine months or longer until all of those trees repair themselves and the berry bushes come back and you see all the deer come back. Because right now, the deer might be moving away from that path of damage. If they're moving away, why do you think they're moving away? Go ahead. They're food stores. They don't want to get killed. Maybe they're kind of like in this trauma right now. But eventually, everything's going to balance back out. You know, sometimes nature itself makes our food web unbalanced. It disrupts the flow of things. But sometimes humans are responsible for that. We're going to work on how can humans help out. 
Mother Nature has a big task. She has a big job of keeping all of these food webs all across the globe straight, balanced. And as good stewards of our environment, we have a responsibility not to make that task harder. So in our next unit, we're going to talk about what are some things we can do to keep everything balanced and healthy. The day after filming, students were given time to complete a reflection sheet for the WebWorks lesson. This required students to explain, elaborate, and evaluate concepts. Students were encouraged to express their ideas using appropriate scientific language. After analyzing the work, I believe the majority of students mastered the key concepts and overall objective of the lesson. Targeted remediation will be given as needed before a formal, culminating assessment on the Ecosystems Unit is assigned. I look forward to tying our Ecosystems Unit together with our next unit, Earth and Human Activity, as we explore ways that we can make a positive environmental impact, both locally and globally. Before closing, my students and I would like to share our class motto with you. What we know matters greatly but who we are matters more. Thank you for visiting our classroom.